Hello again. Would you like Transform 2 or hmm. Strange sound. No idea what that is. Fireworks in the middle of the day would be an interesting choice. Sounded kind of like thunder, but there's a clear sky, so I'm really confused. Either way, it's outside my house, so I don't need to worry about it. But yeah, it could be, could be a detonation of some kind, celebratory-wise. Wow, that is a lot of elites we could fight. Hmm, actually, I like these lines. Look at this. Check this out. And then option four, extra spicy. But only if we like things really crispy. So, when taking an ambitious start like this, I think either the common relic or the transform two is the play. Transform two can really get his head start on uh, deck building, which I really appreciate. Oh, yes, uh, good good call there. I actually did not see this option. Yes, even better. The map tricked me here. Good call, Avox Silence. There's also two elites over here, although that doesn't... Well, it kind of connects. I don't think we would want to go that way. So if I was to transform two, is this a transform two strike situation? I usually say that Defect wants to remove two strikes, but how do we feel about transform two strikes? Maybe better to go one strike, one defend for two transforms. Especially with Slime Boss at the end of the act, we want to make sure some of our damage is intact, lest we run into problems. And there's enough block cards at the Defect card pool. I think we could reasonably get some, uh, some decent block. My fear is that we get useless cards. There's a lot of, uh, let's call them esoteric or unusual cards in Defect's card pool. And a transform definitely could hit some weird stuff that doesn't do anything turn one. But I guess that's okay. We don't have to go max elites here. Okay, let's, let's gamble on the transform. One strike, one defend. You get loop self-repair. There's that esoteric stuff I was talking about. That said, I'd say these are pretty good. Overall, they're at least more or less immediately useful. Self-repair healing seven each fight is excellent. And the loop is going to give us good reason to pick up a frost orb or focus, as well as a good upgrade target. So that's a pretty good start. That's a pretty good start. I'll take it. Uh, and self-repair definitely encourages us to go more combats here. We want to get some card rewards, we want to get some potions. In fact, the self-repair might be the thing that lets us go through four elites properly here. So let's get started. And put that self-repair to work immediately. Because I don't have any real block cards. I do like that we transformed one of our defends because it means it's very difficult for us to low roll a card reward. We can take either a damage card or a block card and be very happy about it. So no matter what we see, and we see some good stuff, uh, we can take some of it. How about a Doom and Gloom as our first card reward? I say this is always one of the best. It's excellent with loop too. Heck yeah. Give me a Dark Orb. Give me 10 damage to all enemies. It's a good first upgrade too. Cold Snap ain't too bad either, but right now we want the premium damage. And we're definitely going to want something to hit uh, four gremlins or five slimes with if we run into them on floor four here, which the Doom and Gloom will help with. Again, self-repair putting in some work because ouch my face. Get him.
Okay, not too bad. Overclock is here. Allowing us some mediocre immediate card draw. Tempest is a way to make more lightning orbs. Tempest is quite interesting. Or a white noise for random power. We've already got two powers, so adding more powers is a little iffy. Although it would make a storm or heat sinks completely viable. That feels about right to me, Dragon Wingo. Relating to uh, DD2. It's kind of what I felt. I think I want this Tempest. I'd like to be able to push the Dark Orb to the front. I'd like to be able to fill the orb slots immediately. Let's take a Tempest. Gives us good reason to pick up an energy generating card or item as well. Get slapped. Do I dual cast? No, we played the self repair in play, I think. Get zip zapped, son. Sunny. Alright, get our first potion. And a ball lightning for damage, or a, a steam barrier for block is quite premium, actually. Really like the steam barrier. Zero energy means it's great alongside Dooming Gloom or Tempest. Pretty efficient block. We're gonna want some help against Sentries or Legavulin versus Gremlin Knob. We do want more damage, but. I think I do want one block card, and I'm going to take this Steam Barrier. I feel like we have enough offense, thanks to the added stuff. And look at that, immediately blocking exactly six damage. How nice. Dual cast is very likely to kill the Louse. Let's go for it. Did not. Interesting. So now what, we defend strike, then we can strike the louse, double defend next turn, and when we draw back into dual cast, we win. That's fine. Take two, but still heal to full. Oh, we just draw dual cast immediately. Even better. Take one and still heal to full. Easy peasy. Not unhappy with the Sneko Oil. I think Sneko Oil is pretty good with the Doom and Gloom, if nothing else. Turbo is here. Could have taken Ball Lightning and Steam Barrier, but like I said, with the Doom and Gloom and the Tempest, I'm pretty happy with the Turbo. Gain two energy, put a Void into the discard pile. This is going to make us want to add some card draw or retain, which we'll worry about later. I do think this will be a dead draw a reasonable percentage of the time currently, though, Turbo. Sneko Oil scares you. It is a little intimidating at times. My advice with Sneko Oil is to either use it when you've got high cost cards in your hand or, uh, and more specifically, try to use it in a way where the five draw is going to let you immediately end the fight, even if the cards are a bit wonky in their costs. That way you don't have to replay cards that are too expensive. All right, I don't think we want to fight another fight because we do have two potions for this elite already. Let's just take an event here, which is either a card remove or some money. Not likely to go to a shop this act. Moving a strike seems a little questionable, but overall I do like it. Let's do it. All right, hopefully this is Lagavulin. It's not. Okay, it's Gremlin Knob. And we probably want to use a power potion turn one here. I'm more than happy to use both potions to defeat this particular foe. Let's start with the power potion. Bias Cognition. Okay, that's probably enough on its own. Four focus is going to make our orbs do so much more damage. Cool. I do think we need to skip the self-repair here. It's important that we do as much damage as possible. Is 
This is Loop Tempest or just Tempest? I think it's Loop Tempest. So then we get the extra orb at turn three as well. And we don't want to dual cast. I don't believe. So we want to keep the orb slots full. Yeah, I think it's Loop Tempest. OCV28, thanks for the prime and the five months. Yeah, Loop Tempest is 11 damage in two turns. Tempest is 12 damage. We're not going to get a two-turn kill, though. In three turns, Loop Tempest prevails. It also prevents us from redrawing Loop, uh, which is a pretty big deal if we use the Snack Oil, actually. So, yes, Loop Tempest. The order of playing Loop and Bias Cognition doesn't matter. Loop will always blap just before you lose focus, so that that next turn lightning proc is at full value before we lose the focus. It's kind of neat about loop. Good loop. Okay, this would be a pretty good time to do something like turbo Sneko Oil, or we could just play Strike Strike Zap, which is pretty good damage. Uh, we can actually mathematically determine if we have a kill here. And if, I, if I'm in a position of just take 11 and win, I think I'd probably just do that. Let's just take a quick look here. So, Zap would deal 11. Two strikes deals 12. Where's my calculator? And we deal 18 at the end of the turn. So we do 11 plus 12 plus 18. It's 41. Next turn, we deal an additional six at the start of the turn, plus Doom and Gloom deals 10 plus 10, so another 20. And then at the end of the turn, we have two lightning orbs that zap for five each, so another 10. It means our total damage is 77 at the end of next turn. And I think what that means is we just play Strike Strike, do not play Zap. And then we have a kill next turn. That sounds good. Take eight damage, beat Gremlin Ob. I'm very happy with that. And we only used one potion. We got another potion back, too. Got some weird potions. V2 coming soon says, if I use an upgrade potion while confused with a three cost dual cast, will it go to zero cost? Yes, that will become zero cost. Uh, quick rule for you, when upgrading a card that has had its cost randomized, the cost will become the normal upgraded cost of the card unless the card already costs zero, in which case it'll stay zero cost. And I think that'll cover basically every card in the game except Blood for Blood, and there might be one other weird exception somewhere. Blood for Blood is a special card, and it's different, and it doesn't care about it, what you think. Um, but what I think is that we want a free buffer, which I'm going to immediately upgrade. Thanks. Heck yeah, I'm going to upgrade buffer. Four elites, no problem. Lack of Ulan can't touch this. Gremlin Ob can't touch this either. Sentries, we can talk. Easy. Easy. Okay, Tempest for one here. Uh, 
I don't play Zap, though. We play next turn, self-repair, loop, strike. This is a really good start to a run. Wakey, wakey. Eggs and bakey. Flat. Um... Not sure if potions. I don't think we care. Buffer says we don't care. Perfect fight. We healed off the leg of Ulin, picked up another potion, found a hologram, or claw. And a whetstone will upgrade two random attacks. There is a 66% chance this upgrades Doom and Gloom because this deck has no strikes in it. Damn it. All right, well, I tried. I did my best, chat. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Classic. I think I am going to take uh, Liquid Bronze over the... Uh, uh, discard Liquid Bronze over the Sneko Oil, rather. Keep Energy Potion Sneko Oil. And uh, move onwards with uh, Egg on my face. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> that'd be a good moment to clip. <laughs> Someone please, for the love of heck, clip that and submit it. What is it? Exclamation point clips? There we are. Yeah. So make your clips there. So, given that we just established the deck has literally only three attack cards in it, do we want a shuriken, which would require us to play all three of those attacks on the same turn in order to get any benefit at all? No. <laughs> ah. So is this where we use the Sneko Oil? I think so. I can't play both Buffer and Doom and Gloom if they're both two cost. But what if they were both three cost? And I had more cards in my hands. Could also use the Energy Potion, go Buffer, Doom and Gloom, Strike. But I like living dangerously. Easy every time. Wow, that turned out amazingly. Look how much block I can make this turn. And put the Dark Orb in front. Sneck Oil of the Gods. Gremlin Knob destroyed. Bottom deck dual cast of the Gods also. I have buffers, so I can just do this. Buffer preserved for next fight. In the form of an incense burner. Every six turns become intangible. Compile driver's not bad with two orb types in the deck. We would like to add frost, question mark. Not sure about that, actually. Maybe I don't want any of these cards. I did say I wanted card draw, though. This is card draw. Okay, I'll take it. Not great card draw, but it's sufficient card draw. This run is very clearly going to silly places. We even have another relic coming up this act, as well as two upgrades. Pretty exciting. Here's the five slimes. No sign of doom and gloom yet, though. Unfortunate. Lightning orb save me. Thank you. Okay, now it's bad, though. Now we have a bad time. Uh, if we kill you. Let's take the turbo. 
Ouch. Do you mean Gloom doesn't even do anything anymore? Buffer is my only hope? It's kind of sad. Oh no. <laughs> Maybe stalling wasn't the best option here. It's alright. Got plans. Okay, we can turbo Doom and Gloom, Tempest to kill, then we'll be intangible turn one of the Burning Elite fight. I guess that's fine. It's fine. Much rather be turn two, but. I don't really think it matters that much. Glacier is here. Or another hologram is here. Hologram is also technically card draw. I do like holograms a lot. E Dogs Rowan 2, thanks for the seven months. Good morning to ya. Zonard Stark with 47, a master of 47 out of 48 months of subs. Bring back the chair. Where is the chair? Compelterverse says take the glacier. Also, Defect says take the glacier. Let's take a glacier. We're also increasingly leaning in the direction of a deck that could take a Snekowai and be really happy about it. As we have two cost, two cost, two cost, hologram, X cost. All of these say Snekowai is pretty good. What about our upgrades, though? We only have a scant few upgrades to provide. And a lot of good targets. I think Hologram, Turbo, Doom and Gloom are probably some of the best. Loop is also pretty good. We should probably start with Doom and Gloom, especially since we can Hologram it. Really want the extra damage for Act 2. Uh, we especially want the bonus damage for this potentially superpowered Triple Sentries fight. If I had to make an adjustment to any defect card, what would it be? How would I fix Claw? That's that's what I'm trying to think. How would I change Claw? Claws would definitely be too strong if they drew one. There has to be something else you can do. Hmm. Claw's already perfect. Could make the initial damage a little higher on the Claw. Make Claw it into Tantrum. That'll fix it. That's right. Claw puts itself in the draw pile and makes all your other attacks do double damage. That's what it does. You know, I think we've got too much health, so I'm going to take the gold idol and just take 22 damage. And we get more gold for essentially no downside. Sounds good to me. And this is actually perfect now, if we wake up, uh, which we have to anyway, because we buffer two hits and then we're intangible on the fourth hit, should there ever be a fourth hit. So this enemy really cannot hurt us at all. Good. Give me Tempest. Just Doom and Gloom, I guess. It's fine. It's a pretty bad turn overall, but as, as aforementioned, it really doesn't matter because this enemy cannot hurt us. We're completely invulnerable to anything it would try to do. Uh, do I want to be turn one intangible for Slime Boss? I don't think so.
Okay. Then Chaku will provide more energy to us. Every tenth attack turns into one additional energy. Here is a scrape. We don't have very many zero cost cards. I am instead considering heat sinks here. This is card draw and premium card draw at that. Whenever we play a power card, draw one. We have one, two, three other powers currently. So this is draw up to six for one energy. Well, uh, sorry, up to three for one energy. Six once I upgrade it, which will be very fast. And it means any other powers we add start to get crazy here. I think Heat Sinks is one of Defect's most breakable cards. Dare I say it, this might be the best card draw card in the game, beating out Dark Embrace and Rushdown for the privilege, just because of how many cards you can draw off this thing. It's really crazy. Is he allowed to say that? Scrawl can only draw you at 10 cards at most for zero cost, which is a really good deal. But he thinks can do better. If Dark Embrace upgraded to draw two instead of one, then, then it could talk to Heat Sinks. It is harder to play a power than it is to exhaust a card though, that's for sure. Golio, thanks for 42 months. The ultimate answer to life, the universe, and everything. Heat Sinks really needs a mummy hand. I disagree uniquely, Kay. I think we can make do with either a Turbo Plus, an Aggregate, or a Recycle Plus. I think any of those could, could perform a, a similar role. Upgrade this early, just in case we up, get to duplicate it or something, or if we end up taking a uh, fusion hammer. I also want... Oh, yeah, that was thunder earlier. It is now raining a lot. Okay, I see. I understand everything now. All right. Mystery, this is of the universe are solved. There's a real tempest going on. I think we can just self-repair Tempest. I don't want to redraw the self-repair in this fight. Just go to three lightning orbs and begin the blappage. We're not afraid of the slime crush, as we can likely block it with buffer here. Although not guarantee, actually. I don't think I'm going to play the Glacier. And a dad joke for Spacey. <laughs> Why are slimes terrible at, at metaphors? Because they can only convey slimilies. No refunds for that truly awful pun. Gooseberry, thanks for 25 months of support. The quarter century. A joke makes Slintlock want to split. Is this, I was just thinking of that, Lilac Frappuccino. I don't immediately want to do Heat Sink's buffer. Normally that would be the order of operations here. But we'd be drawing with zero energy into some relatively important cards. Next turn I want to play Loop Doom and Gloom. So I think we go, yes, buffer then Heat Sinks, or even maybe buffer Strike. But I think buffer then Heat Sinks. Just tank the hit with the buffer. And get ourselves relatively deployed here. We actually don't quite split the slime boss, which means our incense burner is slightly wasted. But I don't think we're going to have needed it, ultimately. Could do something fancy with liquid memories, but I suspect we win this fight without further involvement from our potions. Bit of a shame, this draw. We can block for 11, we're being attacked for 12, but we have one buffer, so 
really doesn't matter if we play the defense or not. Just end turn here. And Spacey1993, thanks for the six months of support. And that dad joke, Renraku, was a, a play on uh, simile. Metaphors and similes. Slimilies. It's, it's bad. Really bad. Don't attack me. Or do, it's your life. I'm not your slime dad. I killed your slime dad. Statman with the prime sub. Giving out some stats. Not what I would describe as a, a good draw, but uh, here we are. Got him. And I guess we can set up the incense burner a little bit higher for Act 2. We'd like to be intangible turn 1 or turn 2. I'm even willing to pay hit points for that privilege, I think. So I'm going to take 8 damage here. Try to set up intangibility for specifically turn one of Act Two. Which could save our bacon if we run into two thieves. Um, if we run into Chosen or Guardian, we might prefer to be intangible turn three, huh? Avocado, yeah, avocado, avocado, definitely, definitely a thing. Let's let's be turn one. Cool. Did you know that I play games other than Slay the Spire? It's true. Catch me over on Baylor Lord Plays for card games, RPGs, strategy games, and more. Money and powers? Another buffer. Poor Surge, not too bad either. Does good damage and gives us an artifact. But I think I'm going to take another buffer here. I think that's the play. Let's go double buffer. Surely we'll get a mummified hand. Oh, we do get a Sneko Eye, and we have no energy relic options too. So now we're looking at a deck that has one, two, three, four, two cost cards, and a Heat Sinks Plus, and a Hologram, and we're being offered Sneko Eye. Lord Sneko does have many things to offer us here. That would be additional card draw, letting us get to the big important cards more easily, and the randomization of card cost means we can sometimes play a lot more cards than usual. Sometimes we can't, though. Bit odd with the heat sinks. Now we definitely want to recycle. Vod Catastrophe says, I seem to take Core Surge only as a speculation towards bias cognition. Is that a limited view of its utility? Yes. There are a handful of specific fights that a bias cogni uh, that a core surge can really help with. Uh, although, problematically, a lot of these fights, you need to draw the Core Surge very early in order for it to do the, the important thing. Uh, namely, the Chosen, you can block the Hex debuff. You can block... Vulnerable or Entangle from the Red Slaver. You can block Entangle from the Spire Growth. You can block Confusion from the Sneko. You can block... Drawdown or Vulnerable from Time Eater one time. You can block Vulnerable on Heart if you draw it turn one specifically. Although, like I said, that's really hard to do without a Bottled Flame or an early Seek or something. It's actually really unreliable to block Vulnerable from Heart with a Core Surge. In addition to all of that, you can use Core Surge with a Flex Potion or a Speed Potion to gain five Strength or Dexterity for a whole fight, which can definitely make a big difference. Five Dexterity on Defect can be a block plan for the hearts. Five Strength with Barrage or a bunch of zero-cost attacks can do wonders as well. You can also block Focus Down from Hyper Beam 
uh, or reprogram, allowing you to run Hyper Beam in a focus heavy deck if you've got a Core Surge. I think that one's a really cool interaction. FTN 2020, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Does someone know when the merch store will open again? I know that one, Castle. I am planning on bringing back the merch store later this year, uh, around the time of our five year partner anniversary on Twitch, coming up in September. I'm hoping to reopen the merch store with a couple new designs, as well as the ones we sold previously. So the merch store will be back. It will. Great question. Castle, thanks for the two gifted subs of support. No, book of dad jokes. You know, that's actually not a terrible idea. I could just make a book of the things I've said on stream. 500 awful puns to tell to your children is what I could call it. Or I could write all of them down on a mug and sell the mug. Even better idea. It'll be like one of those t-shirts that has an entire Shakespearean play on it. But for dad jokes. Or yeah, the, the B-movie mugs. <laughs> the entire script. How's it going, Krungle to Kungle? What a name, what a player. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. I think perhaps second place here to Calling Bell, three additional relics. This could get us the mummified hand we want. Potentially. You get one common, one uncommon, and one rare relic. And there's definitely some big hits that could transform this deck. Get an unremovable curse, but I think with the heat sinks and the amount of draw we have at this point, we have curse resistance. So we could probably tolerate the curse of the bell. But I suspect the Snekawai is far stronger. Uh, if we find an echo form, we're going to go absolutely ham, for example. So, we're rich, and we're ready to kill elites. Oh, well, there's a path for us. <laughs> I was just thinking. What? Is there a path with shops and elites? I guess, I guess there is. It's many of both. Oh, and we can even do this. It's even better. We can more distribute those shops. There, that I like. That's what I'm talking about. This path right here. And we're already two out of three keys. That's right. No burning elite to worry about or think about pathing into. Really, Vab says, do I find Pyramid or Snekawai more fun? I Pyramid is my favorite relic in the game, personally. I like Runic Pyramid because it allows you to win with cards that are normally too conditional or too unreliable to win normally, like uh, Finisher on Silent. I'm looking at you, Finisher. Stupid, unreliable card. But I like the card conceptually. It's just that there, there's so many cards inspired that seem like they're cool, but they don't work. Until you have Pyramid, then they do work. Grand Finale is a great example. Set up. So many others. Xerxes. Grats on a, an A20 rotating five streak. And thanks to watching the stream and having fun playing again. Most important tip I can actually give, you want to get better at this game, make sure you're having fun while you're playing it. It's actually perhaps the most important tip. Because if you don't have that, then you don't have anything. There's no point in playing a video game if you're not having fun. Ah, turn one intangible. Take that, avocado. Also, I have a buffer, so I guess it didn't matter that much. But we don't have to lose the buffer this way. I like it. Bonk. Turbo, buffer again. Three buffer stacks. Should probably get played. Let the buffering begin. Normally a very rude pattern, but we don't care. Easy. Get all the powers down. So sometimes we can't play that many cards with the Snekawai, but eventually there will come a turn where we can get a ton done at once, like this turn. And then goodness will be had.
Also, perhaps have the luxury to set up intangible again. Now we are not going to be able to fight Avocado, so I'm actually going to set up intangible for turn three because of Chosen and the Sphere both attacking on turn three. Also, that's less turns of setup required, so I like it for that reason as well. Trying to increment Nunchaku as much as possible, also. While so doing. So next turn we kill. Or do we? <laughs> but I can't kill. Oh no. Well, I guess turn two is fine. Classic. There, that's that's fine. That's fine by me. Ooh, another self repair or a defrag to give us focus. Let's start grabbing focus here, as well as you guessed it, more powers to go with these heat sinks. Blessing of the Forge, not bad, but I'm not gonna bother. It's two thieves, so I'm actually glad we um, intangibled a little earlier. You heard me, I'm glad. And they're probably not going to get to attack again, so let's Tempest instead of Buffering. Hopefully I don't regret that. Might regret that a bit. Nope, all good. Cool. Charge battery is okay with Sneko Eye. Without an upgrade, though, I'm not interested in taking it. That's right, DS Twitch. Uh, in the original early access version of this game, Runic Pyramid caused you to draw one fewer card per turn, which made it impossible to get enough cards to retain in the first place, for the most part. I think in retrospect, I was underestimating how good that old version of Pyramid was, but I'm definitely glad it got buffed. Take a couple events. I feel strong here. Ah, a group of bandits wearing large red masks. Pay them 400 gold, or pick a fight with them, gain a bunch of money, and make enemies weak on turn one after we murder them. Sounds good to... Well, maybe we're not getting to murder them, though. Maybe they're murdering us. Certainly this initial draw is questionable here. Hmm. This looks painful. Everything is too expensive, and more importantly, we didn't even draw the correct cards. So I think I just play loop defrag. We eat 12 to the face, and we go to next turn. More than willing to use the liquid memories on the doom and gloom here, if necessary. Perfect. Yeah, I think that's the easiest way through this fight here. Let's do that. Actually, liquid memories on hologram. Which would block if I didn't have negative four decks. I guess that just exhausts the hologram now. Was that beneficial? Not really. It's okay. Uh, and I think I want a glacier to evoke these orbs immediately. Yeah, so we can get a couple kills here. Take one. And I should be able to play self repair before we kill Bear here. Next fight's likely to be an elite. I'd really like to be intangible turn one. So actually, let's just try to kill Bear next turn. Uh, that way, in case of triple slavers, we have an answer. Hey, we even got the self-repair. Good work. Bear, yes! 
I'm also down for one Equilibrium. Equilibrium's deck OI is a bit iffy. Sometimes you want to retain the cards in your hand, most of the time you don't, because they're two or three cost and clogging you. It's also a pretty good block for one card. So with the Equilibrium, I can choose whether to play it or not, and that's kind of the, the key there. Hey, there's our Echo Form. Can we find the other one? There's also Sunder. Come on, come on. No. No, I couldn't find it. They were in the bottom. Dang it. Both an Echo Form and a Sunder slip away from us because of my stubborn insistence on going top to bottom, left to right. Well, I guess we could just buy the Sunder if we want to. I'm also down for a fusion here. An unmastered fusion sounds vaguely reasonable in this deck specifically. A couple things to consider here in this shop, including the prismatic shard. Some interesting choices here. That's for dang sure. We certainly want this under. I'm willing to pay for it, even though we couldn't get it in the event. Gonna help a lot in these upcoming elites, for surezies. I'm gonna grab the fusion too for the mastery chance. I think it's also a half decent card in its own right. That leaves us with 335 to consider gold plated cables, the prismatic shard, or a calcum and a few others. Or a calcum and loop are pretty bad together. What's after Spire today says Cross Up MK. I'm planning on doing some against the storm. Very appropriate, actually. I was just looking at the incredible downpour happening outside my home. Well, I was on the break there. Did we finish Tunic? Not yet. We're going to keep doing it uh, on Saturdays until it's over. I don't think that I want this Prismatic Shard. Prismatic Shard with Sneko Eye specifically is really quite a crapshoot. There are a lot of low slash zero cost cards out there. And you might just be offered stuff that does not work with a Sneko Eye. Guyzilla, thanks for the 15 months of support. Consume is not bad here. No, consume is not bad. Will Tunic make it to YouTube? I think Tunic will make it to the Variety YouTube. Yes. I have been planning on uh, highlighting that. I do think I want to remove a card and then keep the rest of the cash is what I'm going to do. Buy none of these relics, actually. And head to this store as planned for the extra elite. I negotiate with terrorists with 32 months, closing in on three heckin' years. Thank you. Upgraded strikes say remove something else, like defend or let's go zap. Zap remove sounds completely fine to me. And then probably upgrade the other buffer, but defrag upgrade, sunder upgrade, loop upgrade are all half decent. Let's start with buffer. Then maybe defrag. I guess we don't get many more upgrades this act. Crypto, 1406 with 16 months. Thank you. For the long heck of time. I'll play Fusion. I'll do it. You bring it on, you stinky book. Hmm. Don't I normally take Mondays off? Today is definitely not Monday. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> yes, I do. I've been there before. gonna hold on to our stuff for a turn here. Maybe Hologram Sunder? Hologram Sunder sounds good. And I think we use Essence of Steel as well. But also consider Compiler over here. Let's do Compiler. Okay, we have a three cost buffer in our hand. Don't love that. But I will tolerate it. Perfect full block, okay. Fine with that. 
Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Here we go. The card draw. Card draw is real. So yeah, uh, heat sinks very strong. As aforementioned, part of the part of the reason heat sinks can be so busted is you get to do all of the card draw on the same turn and draw 12 or more cards. Basically what we just did. Crazy. Just crazy. All right, this is an example of a situation where you do not want to play the equilibrium with Sneko because it is not helping to retain this hand. This is losing one buffer. That's fine. What a weird Sneko fight. For intangible turn two for the next fight. Really like to make it turn three. Or uh, turn one, excuse me. That's not how turns work. My Fusion Glacier. Can I get away with this? I think I can. We're guaranteed to draw Doom and Gloom next turn for the kill. We have three buffers. This is fine. Get a Juzu Bracelet. We can no longer encounter fights in question mark rooms. Specifically here at the end of Act 2, this is quite good, as this could increase our chances of finding the so-called Thwack or Colosseum event that rewards us with two relics. It's kind of a long shot, but it could happen. With the Sneko Eye, I think we definitely want either Reinforced Body or Glacier. I actually really like Reinforced as a Sneko block card, especially if you're able to generate a lot of energy from various means. Let's take that for variety. Any use for an Ancient Potion? Not really. No, not really. Hey, Ranwood, would you like an Essence of Steel? Give me a Thread Needle. Make it permanent, please. We get a White Beast Statue. One potion for many potions. That's a good deal. We also get an Omomori, negating our next two Curse Relic. Or, just Curses, not Relics. Just Let's us take Curse Key from the boss, perhaps. Get a card removed. Juzu Bracelet uh, already did something. Good job, Juzu. All right, now that I have Reinforced Body, I think Defense can go. Because of the Nunchaku and the free upgrades, I'm going to keep the Strikes. Whereas normally I would remove those preferentially. It is the Three Slavers, which means our diligence in setting up turn one intangible is massively rewarded. And I think just reinforced here. So that we preserve the buffer. Yeah. That's an okay turn one. Not doing any damage to the back slaver on turn one is a bit problematic. Considerably more problematic now. Looks like a good turn for the energy potion. I removed a defend over steam barrier. Steam barrier blocks for more than a defend does. Although you're right, they are pretty similar. So what are we thinking here? Heat sinks loop. Turbo doom and gloom. Defend. Defend doesn't do anything. This does something, though. So we can Energy Potion, Defend, Equilibrium, Doom, and Gloom. Next turn, I can't play Attacks, but I can play Buffer. Good enough for me. Yeah. 
It's a shame, too. We got a zero cost center. Maybe I just hologram equilibrium so we can retain that. An example of a, a situation where we very much want to be able to retain our hand with Sneko Eye. What's one cost, though? Oh, shoot. I can't hologram it. Uh oh. Unless. Fusion. Glacier dual cast the fusion gives us four energy. We can hologram equilibrium. It's really roundabout. And I could just use the dual cast to kill more directly. Although I actually can't, so. Very well. The roundabout way it is. Make a ton of block, too. Not quite enough. Bit of a shame. This only does 18, huh? Although we're not being remade vulnerable, so I guess that's fine. So we do 12 plus 18, 30 damage. Not enough to kill you. So we should probably just Sunder here. Although that wastes some of the damage. Oh well. I guess. Too bad, so sad. Tempest, here we go. Something to use this energy on. I'll take it. What a weird slaver's fight. And yet, here we are, victorious. Paint upgrades to defense. Ooh. A little bit late for genetic, but not too late, especially with an upgrade. No defense. It's actually worse than upgrading to defense. <laughs> Dang it. Life design. Thanks for the 25 months. Can't stick around to watch the stream, but wanted to make sure you didn't forget to resub. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, Hyper Beam is here. Hyper Beam is something. Well, I have no way to prevent the focus loss. What oh. Strange Spoon? Chance to preserve cards that would exhaust. Currently, that can keep Algorithm and Hologram and Tempest, and that's it. Most of the really good exhausting defect cards are free, and therefore we're not we're not going to take them with Sneko Eye. So I don't think the Strange Spoon is that good. Note that Strange Spoon does not give a chance for Void to stick around. This will not work on Ethereal cards or cards that get exhausted by other cards. Only cards that exhaust themselves when you play them. Does Strange Spoon effect? Very important to clarify. So no chance for, for Void or Ascender's Bane to stick around. But Slime, Slime is a card that exhausts when you play it. You have to play the card Slime, and that does include Slimed. Spoon loves Slimed. But does it love Discovery? I love Discovery. I think I also like a second Reinforced Body. This deck wants a Chemex. Let's do that. Long line of hooded figures offer us a ritual dagger. Bit late in the act for that, don't you think? I'll take the money instead. Ooh, that turn one. Wow, the turn one intangible working out against Gremlin Leader. That's not something you see every day. It's pretty cool, actually. What do you got, Discovery? Core Surge? I'll take it. Great turn one. This deck, in general, has had very easy combats. We're just cruising here. Hey, where's my Sunder? Sunder actually costs three? Unacceptable. Unacceptable. 
But Heatsinks is here to rescue us. I think I have to hologram dual cast to kill the minions? I think so. I don't have to, I guess. I'm going to. This is completely A-OK. -okay. A -okay. No problem here. We're already blocking for 11. This makes no difference, but might as well. Lose two buffers. Not a problem. Okay, hold on to the Sunder for next turn. That sounds great. There we go. Kill the stupid wizard. Collector coming up. We'd really like to set up the burner for Collector. Um, turn six is pretty good for the Collector fight. That's the second turn after the Mega Debuff. I often like the first turn after the Mega Debuff, but with Buffer, maybe the second turn works out just fine. Uh, we've got the kill now. Let's just take it. Uh, if I Glacier dual cast, we do not save the Nunchaku as we do not kill. Okay. Let's just do this. Boot thingy gives us block on turn one. Not useful in the upcoming boss fight, but definitely useful later. Most other fights in Act 3 will deal damage on turn one. And now we can upgrade our defrag. Never did get that loop upgraded, huh? Definitely behind on upgrades here. Not sure if we have any chance to fix that. Admittedly. Do not know if this is going to work out. Let's see, just send her a second time? Sounds good to me. 50 damage turn one's a pretty good start. Okay, we do end up taking a bit of a bonk here. We'd like to preserve our buffer, which I think means playing the Glacier in the defend. That way the buffer tanks this and only this. We keep one buffer stack for next turn. Let's do that. Which we do end up needing to. Let's see. Can't go Doom and Gloom and Buffer here, unfortunately. I guess I don't have to buffer. Yeah, let's just play the Doom and Gloom. Doom and Gloom and turbo reinforce body will be enough to again block these two buffer this hit they're still alive next turn but we can sort that out and then we have the buffer to redraw into do need to get these minions off the field i was just thinking sunder would be really nice right now perfect timing sunder Play Fusion, we're good. All of these cards are too expensive. So yeah, just give me more energy next turn. I guess I could Tempest for three Lightning. It's not terrible. I'm just gonna play Fusion. This be a good time to resummon or buff, Collector. Nice. Well done, Collector. Thanks for obeying me. Take a free hologram, I guess. Bonk. Actually, wait, did I want to do that? No, because now we get new minions. Hmm. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We definitely just want to, again, another situation where the equilibrium is actually quite good. Currently, dual cast does not kill a minion. Dark orbs always target the enemy with the lowest health. So if I dual cast the dark orb, it hits the front one two times, which is a mostly a waste of the damage. But if I retain the dual cast, cast it next turn, it'll be strong enough to kill them both.
Sounds good to me. That's seven energy. I think we should turn that into a Tempest. We could block with Reinforced Body, but with buffers stacked, I don't really see a need to do that. So let's just do some damage. Completely behind on damage in this fight. Let's sort that out. I can buffer this too if I need to. And I say yay. Yay to buffering. Collector cannot attack three times in a row, so we always had a spare turn here. Not much I can do with this turn, though. Definitely going to be under threat next turn, although the debuffs are gone, so I think we're fine. Yeah, it's only 31 damage, and we're no longer frail, so it's easy enough to block with reinforced here. Too. Gotta kill somehow. We've got health to tank with, and we've got a self repair too. GG. Get collected. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Hey, Masum, have I tried Darkest Dungeon 2? Yes. I would not say there's. A whole lot in terms of similarity to Spire, other than maybe the map formation of Darkest Dungeon 2. Um, it's primarily a turn-based RPG-style combat, almost Final Fantasy style, but there's a, a lot of positioning that can be really important. Ultimately, I found Darkest Dungeon 2 a little too grindy, repetitive, and stressful to be enjoyable just was kind of lacking that that spark, that that joyous feeling of accomplishing something. I couldn't capture it in that game, and so I left it by the wayside. Others have enjoyed playing a lot of DD2, though, so there might be something to it. Hmm. Bias Cognition for some focus to amplify our damage substantially is not a bad idea. I'm also considering... We could unironically take Thunder Strike here, although we'd really want a Storm to make that actually effective. We don't channel very many Lightning Orbs. Seek is questionable with Snekowai, but can still be very useful. I'll take a Biased. For me personally, actually, uh, upon, upon rethinking about it, what personally made me bounce off Darkest Dungeon 2 the most was simply the game's soundtrack. I straight up don't like the music, and therefore it, it put me in a hostile mood when playing the game, which made for terrible stream content. I'm going to leave this colorless potion on the ground. Hey, we talked about Curse Key with uh, Omomori. Perfect. Happy to see you, Curse Key. Sacred Bark with a potion every combat is also pretty powerful here. This regen potion becomes a lot of potential healing. Yeah, compared to games where I've 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 not liked the gameplay that much, but I've really enjoyed playing because the soundtrack was so good. Um, both Curse to Golf and The Last Spell are are really good nominations for a game like that. I've actually been enjoying some Last Spell off stream. I think it's a bit too slow and information dense for uh, to make a good stream game, but I've really been enjoying it just as a solo venture. truly plotting like uh, playing one night of combat just the combat took me like two hours this morning crazy but I recommend Wild Frost yes I highly recommend Wild Frost Wild Frost as it is is a very cute delightful rogue experience definitely very punishing and not that dense in content however there is a, a detailed roadmap provided by the devs uh, for post-release content. So any issues you might have with Wild Frost are likely to get addressed in the future. And so I, I heartily recommend it because it's good now and is going to be better later. So if it's on sale, it's a good, good purchase. Let's grab a Cursed Key. Yeah, playing Last Spell kind of feels like if you were playing 
in complexity wise, it's like if you're playing Slay the Spire, but you had an adventuring party of six characters fighting 30 enemies at the same time. That's that's the last spell. <laughs> or actually more like 200 is the total I had on screen this morning. 200 enemies at the same time. 15 bucks on Steam? That's a good deal for Wild Frost. If I played Anno 1800, I have not. I have not. Not many elites this act, huh? How about upgrades? Can I at least get those? Um, also, no. No, not really. But I can get a buttload of shops, so there's that. Do I want a buttload of shops? Not really. One or two sounds great. Bummer. Guess we do this? And then take some events first half? How bad do I need upgrades here? Bias would like an upgrade. Hologram would like an upgrade. Turbo would like an upgrade. These aren't mandatory, though. Let's start here. Do I like any Zaktronics games? I very much enjoyed Space Cab, especially as somebody with an understanding of uh, some chemistry stuff. It was extra delightful. And I think I've tried a couple other other uh, puzzlers. Never finished a Zachtronics game, but I, I doubt few people have, so at least I'm in good company. Dr. Pepe No, thanks for two months of the Prime Sub. 27 cards left. We did play Inscription on stream. On stream. The thunder gets closer. Oh no, did Zachtronics go belly up? Oh no. No more games from Zachtronic, says Moribund. Stop making games to go into teaching. Well, I, I've been there, and that's clearly the wrong move. <laughs> you gotta go the other way. Teaching, then video games. It's simple. Maybe could have set a burner a bit better there, but whatever. Hello World Plus. No? I don't think so. I don't think that's what I want. Weak Potion could be really important for the heart. Hmm, I'll think on that. Teaching game stuff. Well, that's really cool, actually. I, I can't can't be upset with anybody for doing that. All right, let's take the elite. Yeah, I'll take the elite. Don the red mask to here to give us two hundred and twenty-two gold. That's gonna make our shops later this act and in Act Four pretty juicy. I like it. It's not my favorite turn, but I'm gonna retain these reinforced bodies. Thanks, Don. Appreciate you. you. Do Sunder Hollow Sunder to kill the middle one? Let's discovery first. It's a turbo. So that means I'll do this. And 
they just all have to die at the same time for us to leave the fight, which should be momentarily here. Should be. Don't know if it will be. There we go. Hologram with a plus. A very good card with Sneko Eye. If you have two or more upgraded holograms and a Sneko deck, you have a chance of creating an infinite combo every time you draw through the deck. If both holograms roll zero cost, you can use one hologram to target the other hologram and just loop those back and forth for as much block as you could possibly dream of. Which is pretty sweet. Add calipers for extra value, although we don't have those yet. Again, heat sink showing off why they're so dang strong. Buffer this hit. Block the entangle damage. Take damage in two separate chunks here. 12 at the end of the turn first, and then the enemy's attack after that. So I have to block 37 to block both portions, which I don't think we can do. Get some stuff out of my hand then. There we go. That blocks the 12. Just need 18 more to full block, or we can focus on doing damage here. Hologram for hologram, fetching turbo. Play turbo, play tempest. Play reinforced body. Fully block and deal a bunch of damage. Next turn we're intangible, so we have a turn off from needing to block. For as much. Focus on just killing it. Definitely not the best fight. Doesn't matter too much. We're through. Get another unupgraded hologram. Could go for three. Skim's also decent. I'll take one more hologram. Let's also take this Gambler's Brew, so we can discard any number of cards and draw a new. Very important with the Sneko Eye. This fight's pretty dang easy when you've got two upgraded buffers. Not much of a threat here. We'll just have to, on a few of the turns, do enough damage to prevent this enemy's attack. Shouldn't be too hard. No mastery candidates as of yet in this deck. I'm just really enjoying the run, though. So I don't feel much pressure. For the time being. Alright, we do need to get some stuff to happen, though. Fusion's a potential... Candidate. If we can find another one, there's fusion, but that alone is not gonna not gonna do nothing. Where is my heat sinks? Hello? Shoot. This is not a good order of events here. Lightning orbs are better than frost orbs in this fight. Costs have been bad. Nothing to exhaust there. Yeah, just do Sunder Tempest. Get an extra Lightning Orb there. Bank some energy. Oh yeah, we're also intangible for one of the six turns. So we only have one turn we actually need to solve. Which I'm hoping will be this turn. Got an actually decent looking draw here. Well, 
least it was looking decent. Hmm. Guess we compile. I don't think I can do enough here. Shoot. Then fine. <clears throat> so we could stop the 90 turn on our own somehow. Oof. Not loving that idea. Although I am loving this hand before doing it with. So maybe we just hollow equilibrium. Hold on to zero cost algorithm, zero cost strike, one cost glacier, and some other stuff. That's fine by me. And we have Nunchaku on nine. This should be reasonable. Could have played one of these reinforces for hand space too. Probably should have. All right. Perfect. Okay, that wasn't too bad. It was a little bit spooky. Have I played Hades? Only a couple hundred hours of it. Yeah, we streamed uh, all of Hades several times. Same with Dicey Dungeons. We played through Dicey Dungeons to. Two full times on stream. Really enjoyed it both times. If Dicey Dungeons is on sale, I would definitely recommend picking that one up as a, a very different game to Spire, but similar in a lot of ways at the same time, conceptually. Leoder11, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. I'll take a white noise here. Maybe some random powers. How about FTL Faster Than Light or the other game, Into the Breach? Streamed a lot of both of those as well. FTL Faster Than Light was actually, I think, the first game I streamed on Twitch, I want to say. Or one of the first. Got about 500 hours in that. One of the classic roguelites. Very good game. Argued uh, one of the best roguelites until Spire came along. And Krongle to Kongle, thanks for the Prime sub. Saw you pop in for the first time earlier today. Now you're dropping the Prime sub during the first day of viewership. Appreciate you. Crying Sun, that one I'm not familiar with. Poker Quest we tried on stream. Poker Quest, um, a lot of similarities with Dream Quest, actually, if anyone's familiar. I, I think there's a direct inspiration there. Even the name seems similar, which is uh, a very cool in concept, but janky and very unbalanced, making it uh, more of an interesting exploration than a fun game to play a lot of the time. But a co very cool conceptually. Kerblap. The thunder. Thunder, thunder, thunder. Dead Cells I've tried a couple times, but I didn't enjoy all that much. Not sure why exactly I bounced off Dead Cells. It doesn't quite grab me in the right way. Triple Doom. Triple Gloom. That's a pretty good turn one, actually. Oh man, and the double sunder for the janks on the next turn. Even better. Get a bonked. Do I just channel seven lightning orbs, or do I do something fancier? I think I hollow... Let's strike hollow sunder. Now I can channel seven lightning. Or I can discovery. Let's go to channel seven lightning. Lower Reptomancer's health substantially. Fifth buffer stack. Heck yeah. Quite enough block. Making 32 instead of 31 there. We begin the card drawing here. You may stab me if you must. Ow. Oof.
my face, though. Nothing good to get, but I can recycle a strike, I guess. Restrikle. And we should just focus on finishing the boss here. Next turn could be awkward. Nah, it's good. Preserved Insects makes all future elites small and tiny. You also get a Duplication Potion very strong and a Heat Sinks or a Machine Learning. Uh, are we fighting the Awakened One? We are not. At least not that I can tell. We should drop this weak potion. Wow, and we can trade the Golden Idol in for another 333 gold. I guess I should have taken the several shop route after all. We're rich, Twitch chat. We're rich. Yeah, Mind Bloom could give us another 999 right here. Nope, it's glowing Tesseract. Still look at it though. Metamorphosis. Double metamorphosis. Could this be? Could this be the, the moment? I think we should take them. It gives us something to uh, strive for a win on. Random attacks in the draw pile, not necessarily a good thing, mind you, as the zero costitude of them will be overridden. And there's a panacea to go with our bias cog that we maybe want to consider here. It's kind of terrible with Sneko, indeed, but that's the challenge of the mastery challenge. You could say that, uh, Twitch chat, I'm trying to metaphorsis this into working. Now give me a boat thingy. And a Carter move. Thanks, Juzu Bracelet. This is actually a decent Juzu Bracelet. Normally I am very, uh, anti-Juzu. Here on stream, Marl with a 200 person raid. Welcome to the stream we just picked up in the course of the Slay the Spire Mastery Challenge. Double metamorphosis from the Act 3 event with Snekawai. Not something you're supposed to do, but something that I'm going to do. Because, well, that's just how we do things here. And uh, maybe we can win with it. We got a lot of money just from a couple events here. Our friend Don showed up and did the uh, Moai head. So we got half of 999 gold, 555 gold, which is not how half works. Ah. Hmm, Frozen Eye. Is that good with Sneko Eye? No idea. Not sure if this Amplify is good either. I know Bag of Preparation is good. And I know Toy Ornithopter is good. I don't know much beyond that. Card removal is surely good, too. Amplify, though? I'm not sure. Streak now at 23. Incredibly done, Merle. Closing. You're actually more than halfway to your PB now. It's really cool to see more wind streaking action happening in the Spire. Once I'm done with this challenge, I plan on joining you all. Raven3010, thanks for the 31 months of support. No gold relics. Well, we had a golden idol, but it's gone now. That's part of how we got to that much money. We got 555 gold from two events here, and we had 400 before that, so money was acquired. That's uh, 23 Watcher A20 heart wins in a row for Merle, to be clear. Which is a lot. It's more than I've ever done. I don't have any defense anymore. I could lose the steam barrier. It's pretty lame. It's not terrible. Let's lose a strike. <laughs> Secret weapon bypasses Sneko randomizing. Pretty good, actually, with the uh, metamorphosis specifically. <laughs> a lot of money to pay for that ability, though. I'm going to say no thanks. 
That's right. Choose effects are not the same as drawing a card. Uh, as I mentioned the other day, draw a card specifically means the top card of your draw pile. If the card that you're putting into your hand is not from the top of the draw pile, then you are not drawing it. You are fetching it or adding it to your hand or seeking it or whatever you want to call it, but it's not a card draw. Ultor with seven months greetings to ya. Greetings. Oh good, the buffers are here. Excellent. And just let these go. All right, Metamorphosis, how badly do I regret playing you? Not at all. That's a, that's part of what I was hoping, actually, is that Metamorphosis can make Meteor Strikes for this deck to abuse. Even if the Meteor Strike isn't zero cost, it's still not five cost, and that's good enough. Easy every time. Easy peasy. Does grabbing Void with Seek subtract the energy? No, as, as mentioned, you're not drawing it, so you don't lose the energy if you put Void into your hand by other means. It's actually part of what makes Hologram and Turbo together so effective. You play Turbo, you use Hologram to put the Void from the discard pile into your hand. The Void exhausts, but you don't lose the energy. She panned. Let's get that Meteor Strike back. I want to put it in the discard pile so I can fetch it again. Although, maybe I want to draw into it again. All right, fine. I just want to play Tempest here. Let's keep drawing. Bonk. Eleven lightning. All right, pretty good sign if Giant Head doesn't even get to the start doing the big attacks. Pick up a datum disc. We have one extra focus, and we can add another Doom and Gloom, which I'm gonna do. Mm, and Gloom. Yeah, we're gonna Doom and Gloom that. Charge Battery Plus wasn't too bad either. I'm gonna swap out the pushing again. Excellent. Excellent. Bonk. Nice. Again, free Meteor Strike. Or, again, not, well, not free, but just a Meteor Strike. It's actually not that unlikely. Moderately unlikely. Do I care about intangible turn for time meter? I guess I do. Tangible on turn three. That's the first turn I don't have a boat thingy helping me. All for one. I like it. Maybe I should upgrade this loop. This poor loop. Been trying so hard all game. Kill them on this turn if we can. It's gonna be a yes. There's a real recycle. Exhaust a card, gain energy equal to its cost. That can definitely help us trim the unwanted cards or just whatever rolled three cost. 
uh, and turn it into energy for ourselves. Why does Sunder give energy from killing Darklings, but Hand of Greed or Feast don't work? There's actually no good answer to that question that the game gives. Just because exceptions. It's why Pyramid isn't retained, because they don't want it to. It's why... Mental Fortress procs differently for indignation and inner peace for some reason and various other things like that. That's why the heart goes vulnerable, weak, frail, and the time eater goes vulnerable, frail, weak. I think it is. Some of the debuffs are differently ordered for different enemies. It's so many little odd idiosyncrasies in this game that are that are there. But yeah, it's actually the, the fatal keyword, but Darklings aren't minions, so the fatal keyword provides no insights as to why it doesn't work. It just doesn't. <laughs> yeah, Collector is weak, Voln frail. That's right. Whereas Heart is Voln weak frail, I think. Such nonsense. Such nonsense. All right, Loop, it's your time to shine. I think so. Farkward, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. What a name with a player, Farkward. Hmm. Reinforce for two addresses this problem so we can go Metamorphosis Loop. Could recycle a card, but I don't want to get rid of any of these powers. What do you mean there's no Meteor Strike? Nonsense. I guess we'll leave two cards for next turn. I'm intangible, so this should be enough. We're also not likely to get attacked this turn. We do get attacked, though. Good. Panacea would block the drawdown. I'd still rather block the biased debuff, so let's just go Sunder Buffer. Could also go Sunder Fusion. Sunder Buffer. Let's try again. That's a bit better. So we'll draw three. And go Glacier, dual cast this Dark Orb. For some decent damage. Uh, then we can still keep Algorithm if I just reinforce. turn looks a little bit problematic, but the buffers mean it won't really be. Let's recycle slimed and play self-repair, I guess. Okay, that is a lot of damage, my friend. My time-eating friend. Perhaps more than I am ready to contend with here. Let's recycle the other metamorphosis here. I don't trust it. Not for one second do I trust it. That dual cast in hand. I guess we should keep this thingy then. Yeah, 
And she managed to full block that. I'm kind of impressed. Here we go. We can go Panacea Bias Cognition now. Let's do that. Let's do that. That means eating some damage to the face, but I'm okay with that. Well, eating some buffer loss to the face, more accurately. Time Eater has dropped below half health. Also okay with that. Dark Orb is ready to destroy. Begin destruction protocol. GG. All right, who's next? No Awakened One. That's good. We have a lot of powers. So I'm very happy to not see the bird who would be punishing us for so doing. For playing those flowers. Ooh, a storm. Very exciting. There's also one outside happening. Definitely want to make sure we set up Incense Burner in this fight for the Shield and Spear. I didn't really care about having it set up for this fight against Time Eater, but this fight we definitely want to set it up for Shurzis here. Make a Fission? Sure. I could recycle Tempest for 5 energy if I really wanted to. Only if I could use that to get Panacea Biased would it be worth it. Can't do that. Let's just go Panacea then. Take two. Someone took all my orbs. Uh oh. Okay, good. We have turbo. Good. Once again, no Meteor Strike. Ridiculous. Simply ridiculous. Gloom again. It's doing pretty good damage. Each time we use it. I think we can get a kill here if I hollow Sunder. Then I can play Tempest for four. Might as well. It's zapped, friend. Oh, wait, shoot. We gotta get rid of these orbs, actually. Cool. I don't want to kill before the incense burner is on the correct number here. That would be really quite unfortunate. There we go. So, again, killing when it says four. It's very important. I win and the stream goes offline. That just makes sense. Looks like we are back. The storm is raging. We back. Rough rush. Did it really happen if they didn't see it? Hopefully the uh, the VOD caught it. The VOD caught it. Uh, no surprise, I guess, to have a brief service interruption there with the outdoor weather being uh, pretty intense here. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread could be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this chrysalid, or uh, metamorphosis rather, mastery? You 
charge your claws to their maximum, dealing 2463. I have indoor weather? Yeah, when the roof isn't sealed quite well enough, uh, we do. Usually it stays outside where it belongs, though. Alright, we upgrade, I think, this. Hologram upgrade's also very reasonable. You know what? Let's upgrade a hologram. The chance of an infinite block combo, and just for more fetching of stuff. There's a Dolly's Mirror here. And a double energy. Well, well, well. Looks like we get some choices. Do we double fusion or double double energy? I gotta say, double fusion seems like the harder thing to do on average. Double thinking ahead is definitely a bit of an iffy. We've already got two dead cards. I don't want to add two more. We still have to beat the heart. Even as strong as we are, it's not a guarantee. Oh, I should have upgraded Panacea, actually. So I'm thinking we double the fusion. It's also only one added card versus two. Yeah, very juicy shop overall. Let's double this. If you copy genetic algorithm, does it come in at the current block value? Yes. Duplicating a genetic algorithm algorithm would make another 34 block algorithm plus here, which would be pretty sweet. Same with Ritual Dagger, and same with Searing Blow, copying the number of upgrades. Take a Defrag, even though it's not upgraded. Take a card remove, and I guess that's all. I guess that's all. Remove the last strike. Shoulda pot claw and duped it. Coulda, shoulda, didn't. Could buy the Essence of Darkness over one of these potions, which I don't think I want to do. Also, don't believe I want to buy double energy when I've got two fusions already. Although, with the X cost cards, you know what? It probably still is worth it. Okay. Okay, let's go. Don't attack me turn one. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Once again, Equilibrium doing a good job. Does dupli duplicating Searing Blow with a Molten Egg give it an additional plus one? That's a very good question. I actually do not know the answer to that off the top of my head. Great question. No idea. Oh, are we... No, we're, we're, we're good, we're good. We're still here. For now. Let's see. We can hologram recycle or can do something else. I'm gonna make a lot of energy here. There we go. Now we're talking. All of my cards are three cost and I don't even care. Just recycle them. Easy peasy. Cycle Reinforced Body, go to 10 energy. Oh, I should have Fission first, actually. It's fine. Let's go Doom and Gloom Fission. Thunder Strike! Perfect, because I'm about to Tempest for 10. Although I don't want to kill them both. Be careful about that.
Definitely want to make sure we set incense burner to three or four for going into hearts and not a different number than that. Definitely not a different number than that. I could kill, but I don't... Actually, and since burner on one is okay. I could just kill this thing right now. Copied Searing Blow stays at the same level. Thanks for trying that out, uh, Germony Granger. So Molten Egg does not further upgrade Searing Blow, probably because it wasn't unupgraded in the first place. Interesting. So the big 67 we can just buffer. It's the multi-hit that's a little bit of a problem. But I like having protection in the second cycle. First cycle, we can save buffer more easily thanks to the boat thingies. Let's just kill now. Boot. The boot is here, never fear. Lock potion could help preserve buffer, but I think I'm still going to take the uh, energy potion here. Because of all these X cost cards and the double energy methods. So, onwards into the heart fight we go. We have a full 64 health, a good duplication potion that I might be using on. I'm not sure what, actually. And some hopes and dreams. Here goes. All right, turn one buffer is pretty good. We can go heat sinks buffer or something like sunder white noise buffer. <laughs> I saw I saw the Amaz mod on uh, on Amaz's stream. I, I do sometimes watch. Um, Amaz just has a really convenient time for me actually because he starts about an hour and a half before I do. So if I've got nothing to do before stream, well, he's live. And uh, yeah, I saw the mod. It's amazing. Don't think I'm going to be playing that on my stream, but I'm very glad it exists. Very, very glad it exists. Hmm. Not playing Heat Sink seems like a questionable choice, that's for dang sure. Alright, we'll keep the White Noise for later. I can also Energy Potion to White Noise now, but since the potion can heal us... I think we want to wait on it. Ooh, double buffer. Let's hold off on this one. I want this one in the discard pile at zero cost, just in case we get hit with the multi-attack next turn so that I can hologram it. Put it in play. So let's stop there. I'm not sure if that was right to stop instead of using the potion, but here we are. It is the multi-hit. I don't have an easy answer, but we do have a zero-cost hologram, which is very exciting. So, let's see. Can I block 45 here? Not with what I see currently. Uh, maybe if I hologram reinforce body, I can. We could also maybe use the duplication potion to help. Let's see, if I hollow reinforce body and glacier, how much do we block for? We block for three plus nine. Or three plus six is nine. So nine from the glacier. Plus the 14 we have now. Hologram is one. Reinforce body will be 20 minus 218. That's 42 block. That is kind of like enough. I could use the energy potion to do Doom and Gloom Metamorphosis. That's probably wise. I could do Hologram, fetching Hologram and another card. It's also a reasonable option. Let's see what this makes. 
Nothing good, unfortunately. Hopefully I mathed this correctly. It did. Okay. We lose one buffer to the multi-hit, and we have the other one for next turn. Which we can hopefully... Yeah, good. Panacea really wants to get played. Really wants to get played. So I think we go Algorithm Panacea. No heat sinks, huh? Hmm. Let's just see what this draws real quick. Yeah, just play the Panacea so we can make the bias work. It's a shame to not get this in play. It's okay. And then we're intangible the next time the heart attacks. Note that we haven't done any damage yet, but we're getting set up. Don't worry about it. This is a terrible hand. Wow. It managed to get worse. I'm truly impressed. Four statuses, two energy generating cards, and one bad attack. I guess we just play fusion. This is certainly one of the hands of all time. Okay, multi-attack next turn. This is good. We're not going to dupe Biased. I think we dupe the loop. That sounds right. Yeah, energy generation that didn't even generate energy. That's right. That is correct. We could also dupe Frag. That's kind of sad. Overall, this hand is kind of sad. Let's discover here. Creative AI. Get in here. Actually, I could dupe that. Maybe that's what I dupe. Yeah, let's dupe that. Let's dupe that. Uh, play one more card first for healing. So I'll recycle Steam Barrier. is here. Hollow fetches the upgraded hollow. Might as well. And I actually want to draw a card now so the upgraded hollow stays in the hand at zero cost. Yes, draw now. From more now. Okay. Really want the Frost Orb looped for next turn. Let's defrag. Stop now. Don't play the Doom and Gloom, because again, we want the Frost Orb in front for the extra block. Might as well play this, though, for five damage. Okay. Definitely time to start doing damage to the heart. We need to do a lot very quickly. Thankfully, Creative AI is here to help. With shenanigans like this. Unfortunately, we can't get a lot done this turn. It's not good. We're going to have 6 by 15 headed our way soon. Static Discharge can help with that. Overall, though, we're definitely struggling here. Our cards have rolled uh, unfavorable costs for the most part. Like so. Come on, man.
There we go. The card draw is real, thankfully. I think we should Hello Worlds. At this point, more cards, more better. I'm gonna leave this intact for the moment. Okay, how do we sort this out? It's a lot of heat sinks. Hmm. Catching one cost glacier seems like a good start. I can't make energy out of the discard pile. It's really unfortunate. So I think we stack and then start playing heat sinks. This is not enough block. Shoot. That is a lot of health we just lose. Oh wait, no, static discharge. Ha ha ha. Oh, I forgot about that. Okay, really happy we made the staff discharge earlier. Excellent. That saved me so many hit points. And we might need it again on the next multi-hit. We gotta do damage, we gotta do it now. needs to happen. This has to be played just for the block. That means we retain these cards, but that's not the worst thing in the world with the recycle coming up. Echo form is here. Okay, okay. Everything's turning up Baylor. This is what we need. We're also intangible next turn. Hopefully it's the eight by 15. Shoot. Speed of death is three, that's correct. All right, metamorphosis, you gotta save me. Hyper Beam! I don't want Hyper Beam. He did not save me, Metamorphosis. So sad. Bummer. Multi attack? Oh no. Next turn's gonna be a disaster. Help! We need help. And we need it now. Desperately, desperately need help. I also desperately need Recycle to not have cost three every single time we saw it. Probably should not have hologrammed first here. Should have, re uh, should have recycled first. next turn will be pretty good. Could ball lightning then recycle if I wanted to. Want the extra energy though. Play the heat sinks. I also have to do damage? No. Most important thing is surviving next turn. If we can survive next turn, we can probably win. Here goes nothing. Bias Cognition is definitely going to help me here. I'm going to double Glacier, single Biased. Start that way. This looks like a pretty good start to not dying. Let's 
almost 100 damage. It's in fact more than 100 damage. This is 120 damage. Which is, in fact, way too much. Hologram the Glacier again. Here we go. This will be enough luck. Still need to deal damage. Once again, a problem for future Baylor, though. Full block acquired. Let's dish it out. Easy. Why do we keep getting heat sinks? That's just the mood creative AI is in, I guess. It wants to give us heat sinks. And how. Alright, damage is now required immediately, so I think I double the Tempest. Getting the heart below 200 is absolutely vital here, as it means we can kill the heart next turn. Loop that dark orb. Do some damage. GG, Mr. Heart. GG. Metamorphosis mastered. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to check out Baylor Lord Plays for variety content. Click the blue Baylor icon to subscribe.